Hi there, my name is Candice and you are here in my optometry practice, the Joburg Eye Lady, as well as my other business, the Shopping Queen. The reason that I'm here today actually started on a very um, sad note and that is on the 8th of January 2022, we very suddenly lost my eight-year-old niece to a COVID complication. We were all, of course, rocked to the core because we did not expect it. But as always, God takes what the enemy intends for evil and he turns it to good. And in that moment of absolute mourning, feeling like we didn't know what to do with ourselves, God really, really turned my life around and he made me reassess what is it that I'm living for. And I did a massive turnaround of what I felt was important and what consumed my life and my existence. At the time, I owned two optometry practices which were very successful and took up a lot of my time and kept me away from home. I decided to sell both of those practices and then try and find a place much closer to home where I would be able to be closer to my family and spend less time at work. So I started a very difficult journey of getting rid of these two businesses and it wasn't easy because of the fact that it was within a franchise and the franchisee really enjoyed me working for him. So he made it as difficult as he possibly could and there was a part, a part within that path where he actually we met together with a lawyer and he threatened me that he would actually take all that belonged to me in my name and throw it on the side of the road and I would lose what I had built up for 10 years. This of course wasn't an option because I needed to be able to sell those two practices so that I could start this new dream that I wanted to. And in that moment I really did feel lost. I said, God, is this what you want for me? Do you want me to really, really, really have nothing of what I've worked for, towards so that I can rely on you even more? But in that moment, unbelievably so, I said to myself that even if I had to have lost everything, I know that God would have an answer in that solution. And that pattern was repeated time and time and time again through the entire process of me having to get here today, is me getting to a point where there was nowhere else to turn. I could only turn to God for a, res for a um, resolution. And there was nothing in my own power I could do. I could not control the situation at all. When we finally ended up finding this property, it was also a very, very long search. And many of the places we looked at were either out of budget or not in the right um, area. We finally came across this gem. And the best part of it all is that God is intentional of making me happy, but he also sees many other people around me. And the lady that owned this house desperately needed to sell. She was in a very, very bad financial state. And because of that, she had let the house run to ruin. It was in very, very bad condition. And no one else would have wanted this property. There was way too much that you needed to put into it. But because I knew that it didn't matter what property I bought, I was probably going to gut it anyway to make it fit what I needed it to. It was the ideal property for me to have to purchase. So in that day, God answered two prayers. He answered mine because it's literally a street and away from my house. And he answered hers because she so desperately needed someone that was willing to buy a house that really wasn't viable. As I mentioned, if it wasn't for him, none of this would have been possible. The entire process obviously of renovating is never fun, a never fun exercise. Obviously the end point is amazing, but the journey is very difficult. And many, many times we had to rely on God to provide, to guide us, to give me severe amounts of patience and to ultimately keep reminding me that this was his plan for my life. I had to be patient, I had to trust in him. And I think obviously when you, you, have, no, you have nowhere else to go and you are at wit's end and you're tired and you, you're frustrated, that's when God reminds you that he is in control and that you need to just sit back and be a child in his lap and he will do the rest. These walls, even though right now you see beautiful graffiti on them, underneath them I spray painted verses that I believe were promises of God's intention in my life. From the moment that I bought this practice and the um, boutique, I promised God that this practice would be a light on a hill. I promised him that when people came in here that they would know that it was because of him that I'm here today. I try every single day and I pray every single day that God would use this space as something that people would be able to come to and know that it's different. And I can tell you now, when people walk through those doors, they don't say, wow, it looks different. They say, wow, it feels different. They can feel God's presence here. And that's the most amazing thing. I obviously hope for much more in the future to come. I hope that it's a sanctuary for many. I hope that many come here feeling sad and, and under weather and they leave here feeling enlightened and happy. And I know that I'm willing to do that for his sake. And I think that that's the most important thing is being willing to be used as a tool in his greater work.